Alex here from the Bob Shinya Travel the World podcast. We're so excited to be kicking off season two. Terry and I were fortunate enough to be together for quite a few of our episodes over spring break as we teachers took a moment to reconnect and enjoy each other's company. Unfortunately, we weren't in our normal studio and maybe the sound quality isn't perfect, but we know that you know how much we enjoy getting content to you. So sit back relax, enjoy the first episode of season two, Art Attack. Here we go. Hey, Terry. Hey, Alex. Hey, guess what day it is? A day, I guess, for me to have a heart attack? Well, you may not have a heart attack, but you may have an art attack (laughs) because we are talking all about enjoying art as a traveler today. And I know. I know. I this hear is you. It's going to be a stretch for it's, me. It's going to be. Let's just start right away. Right away. This is what we're going to do. On a scale of one to 10, mm-hmm. how do you feel about including art in your travel? One being like, I please do not bother me with it. 10 being that's the reason I travel. One and a half. And that's where we're going to begin this episode. <laughs> Cue the music. All right, Terry, I'm going to do everything I can today. Today is my day to to convince you that art should be a critical part of your travel. Are you you ready? I am 80% ready, but I am 100% open to being persuaded. Fair enough. I plan to take your frown of a one and a half (laughs) and turn it upside down and make you an art junkie today. That's my plan. Oh, oh. (laughs) let's let's say you're going to make me a five. I don't want you to be disappointed. And if you make me a 10, it's over the top. I am just looking for progress. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I want to start with the idea that art plays such a huge role in our historical perspective. Okay. Take away the cell phone. What social media do you have? Newspaper, Mm -hmm. magazines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now take away the camera. What do you have? Newspaper. Mm -hmm. Only printed word, right? Only printed word. Now take a bet. Now. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Take away the Gutenberg press. What do you have? Art. Word of mouth and art. And art. Okay. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the art world was the Instagram of its time. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I'll give you that. If it's the Instagram, that means it is giving you an insight into what's trending, what people are gossiping about, and what people value. Okay. So you can learn so much by looking at a piece of art based on what they are doing in that particular art, right? Right, right, right. Okay. So now if you match that with the historical aspect of it, and I'm not going to even go into things like technique and all that kind of stuff. We're not going to do that. We're just talking about how it winds up being part of your travel. If paintings framed paintings are the Instagram of the time, then you can even look at sculpture and architecture being part of that as well. True. Right? True. Yes. Okay. So you have sculpture, architecture, and painted works. Right. And you have it throughout history, starting with the Egyptians and even before that with Neolithic things, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. You can go way back even to Our ancient. Our brother's the caveman. This is what I'm saying. Back to ancient Greece right? Mm. Let's start right there with ancient Greece because there's a lot of naked statues everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Don't be body shamed. That's right. Because they really went there on on all of it. They are very clear about how- It's like buying the dolls anatomically correct. They are anatomically correct clear. Yes. (laughs) And you can see what their ideals were 
like they felt that that kind of physical fitness really mattered. It's very clear that that's what they valued, right? Mm -hmm. So then you start seeing that they took all of this time to do it. And I always tell my first graders when I show them any kind of art, not the naked kind, but any kind of art, that they did it without electricity. Like take Mm -hmm. a minute and think that they did that thing with no power. And Mm -hmm. I almost want to flip that around and say, isn't that the power of wow that we see in art? Yes. Is the fact that they did it with nothing to help them. There were no machines to help them. There was nothing to plug in to help them. It was literally just their hands, whatever. Yep. And whatever hand tools they yep. had, right? Yep. So that alone in itself makes me appreciate certain things. Fair, right. fair enough? Fair enough. Fair I mean, enough. Even even have, I mean, I even have like pottery, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How did they make those things so perfect? How can they last underground for that many years mm-hmm. until the archaeological digs in Greece when they're trying to make a new subway station stop everything? Because we found something. Because we found can something. We please apply that to some of the new stuff that doesn't last. Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. And doesn't it make you appreciate that art a little bit more and thinking that? Yes. Do I have you to a two yet? No, I'm going to go to a two. I'm okay. Two. Okay. I feel good okay. about that. Okay. Okay. When we're looking at how this art progressed, we can also see how art was totally affected by what was happening. So we know we go from ages of enlightenment like ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. And then we go to the rise and the fall of the Roman empire. Mm -hmm. And then we go into the dark ages and then comes the Renaissance. And then we have all the stuff happen in France and everybody goes crazy over there with the Bastille. Right. And it's almost like there's a seesaw in history that goes from a very emotional time and an artistic time mm-hmm. to a very logical, pragmatic time where things maybe are a bit more serious. Right. And it kind of seesaws back and forth. What's cool about the art world is the art world does the exact same thing. It's reflecting that in everything that's done. For example, it's very easy to look at a Renaissance painting and see all the math in it. Right. Mm-hmm. Da Vinci and Michelangelo were very into using math to make all of those kind of things because it was a very pragmatic time. Mm-hmm. Fast forward a couple of hundred years and look at impressionism. No math, all emotion all based on the reaction of the light that was there. They're living a different lifestyle. There's no upheaval. It's before World War I. Like all of these things were it, it was the good life, right? right? And you can see that in the more flowing, creative. I I'm doing this to be emotional rather than to be logical and distinct in how I'm handling things. Right. Very interesting to it me. It is very interesting. Yeah. And you can definitely kind of tie that artwork with the history and see the same seesaw that you may be interested in in historical. Mm -hmm. Um, rationale in the art world as well. I like that idea. I'll give you that. Yeah. Okay. 2.2? 2.25. Fair enough. I will take it. What about architecture? How do you feel about architecture? Like, is it something you you enjoy? I don't feel about it. I don't feel Mm -hmm. about it. It's okay. Like for me, I will look at something and go, oh, that's pretty cool. You know, and back in the time when I had to learn about all the different columns in Greece. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, uh, She just crossed her eyes, everybody. Just so we're all clear. It was a cross roll. It was a cross roll. Yeah. Okay. Can I clear that up for you? Please. I'm going to make it so easy. Do you know the names of the columns? Okay. Corinthian. One that starts with a D. Doric. Doric. Oh. The last one starts with an I. I don't know. Ionian. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. All you have to do is know your sibyl, your syllables, and you can put them in order. Doric, mm-hmm. Ionian, and Corinthian. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for me, okay, this it was really cool, mm-hmm. but architect is not my jam. 
architecture is not your jam. Mm -hmm. Okay, but do you appreciate modern architecture? No. No? And the ancient stuff isn't your thing? Mm, no. Because to me, the ancient stuff is the cool, what's cool about it is that they did it with no power. Well, and, and yeah. let me go back yeah. to that. Because as I think about architecture, now I think about how they built the, the pyramids. That interests me because mm -hmm. I want to know who's the guy that sure. got the top part on. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and how it was done. That part interests me. Right. Yes, I agree with you on that. And I think that that is what is interesting about ancient architecture. And architecture yes. probably up until maybe the third or fourth century was like, how in the world could they possibly have done right. that now thing? That is very interesting. Right. And I think a very good example of that is the oldest building in Rome, which is the Pantheon, the one with the Oculus yes, 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 in yes, it. Yeah. And it's like, hey, how did they do it? Right. I, I will take that history lesson every, any day. But B, also, how is it still standing and still in such good condition exactly. after all this time, right? And you can see where they've stripped marble off of it mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. So I do think that there is something more to architecture than just the three orders of columns. Oh, I... Fair enough. Fair enough. Right? Fair enough. I also think that it's also fun to look at the controversy of those kind of things. And my favorite story is the Elgin Marbles, which you were actually going to see. I think I was trying to go and get them. You were? And bring them where? To Greece. Back to the homelands, right? Yeah. So the Elgin Marbles are the marbles that came off the Parthenon. Can we say this, though? If anyone of importance is listening to this, no, I really wasn't going to take them. Oh, well, that's good. That, okay. <laughs> we should it's always a joke. It. It's, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> So the Elgin or Elgin marbles, depending on where in the world you are, mm -hmm. were the friezes that were on the front of the Parthenon. And the, the Parthenon was not white when it was being used. It was full of color. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all painted out. This guy, Lord Elgin, asked the Ottoman Empire, can I please have these rocks that are on the floor? Um, and they were like, yeah, yeah, we don't care about anything that's Greek over in that little podunk town, Athens, which is really what it was at that time. And he goes, great, I'm just going to get a boat and float them back to England. Yeah. Peace. And so he left with all of this stuff. And the Ottoman Empire eventually fell and Greece became an independent country celebrating 100 years yeah. this year. <laughs> okay. And the lamb is cooking right now. The lamb is on the spit as we speak. <laughs> as we speak. Literally. <laughs> so um, the Greeks want them back now. The problem is, is if they gave them back, would it literally crumble the international art world as we know it? Would everybody start having to give everything back? And would you be able to go and see different things from different countries in different places? See, I didn't want to cause an international disaster. Yeah, yeah. And I think it would have put me over on my poundage on my luggage. You would have had to pay for extra luggage I would have on had that. to pay for extra. Yes. So I guess my point is sometimes the story behind the art is far more interesting than the, than art, the, itself. Than the art itself. Still making you an art lover, though. Yes, somewhat. What, does, liker. I'm an art liker. Uh, you guys, she's an art liker. Did I, Where am I at? We're at a three now because I really, you made me think about the architecture and the the pyramids. And you know, you know what I think about, and I can't, the Valley of the Gods. Valley of the Kings. Kings, excuse me. How did they build that? How in the world did that happen? Exactly. And I want to thank Indiana Jones for bringing that to me. And to your attention, which brings me to my next point. Are you ready? I'm ready. I think it's very important to have true pop culture connection to the art in which you are getting ready to view. Here's what I mean. If I see the Mona Lisa in a movie, mm -hmm. I'm going to be excited when I see it in person merely because I've had that connection on a screen somewhere else. Exactly. This works for kids and adults. 
Okay. Yeah. So if you see anything, for example, if you watch some movie where Da Vinci's The Last Supper, they're in the room with that, and you're like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, didn't I see that in whatever movie it was that I was watching? It gives you some sort of context in order to enjoy it, right? That's a world connection. It is a text to world connection, Mm -hmm. isn't it? And I really think that that's a great way to start dipping your toe into the art world. Okay. And I'm going to mention this movie later on, but I'm going to really mention it right now. I see the best beginner art movie for travelers, in my opinion, is Monuments Men. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Which does everything that we literally just talked about. Watching Monuments Men makes you understand so much about the European art world to start with and gives you that background history that has nothing to do with the technique or the paintbrushes that were used. It has nothing to do with that, but it does have to do with the greatest heist that ever happened in the art world, which was the reclamation of art by the Nazis. It was systematic. It was crazy. And it took literally an army in order to save as much as they could. And this story is quite amazing. It kind of starts in Washington, D.C., and it brings you through finding all of this art and the race against the Russians that the Americans were and up against. And I think against. it's really great because for me, mm-hmm. I could care less what position the easel was at, right. what brush stroke they used. Mm-hmm. Don't bore me with that, please. Mm -hmm. Those people who love art and technique, you go. Holla. Yes, exactly. And I'm fine with that part. But that's not, honestly, as an art lover, that's not the thing that interests me the most. It's stories like this. I'll give you a great example of how this particular movie winds up in my future plans. Um, there is an incredible piece that was stolen from Poland that's called Lady with Ermine. And it's a Da Vinci. It is as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than the Mona Lisa, uh-huh. um, which had its own World War II story. Uh-huh. Um, but it's not as famous because it wasn't stolen like the Mona Lisa was, which is a great story on its own. This piece was taken out of a castle by the Nazis and brought back to Germany and eventually found. And it was given back to the government of Poland years later. And it stood in kind of an industrialized museum for quite some time and up at Wawel Castle. It is being put this December, this past December, Mm -hmm. it was put back in its original frame. And in the original room that it hung in, in the Szorski Gallery in Krakow, and you can go see it. Here's what's even more interesting is the frame next to it is empty. And the reason that the frame next to it is empty is because there's still a painting missing. (sighs) And it's it's Rembrandt's self-portrait. I mean, it's it's an important, important piece of art. That's in my bathroom. This is what I'm trying to say to you. <laughs> connection, connection, connection. But anyway, we're going to see that. And I think it's so cool. At the end of the movie, you actually see that Da Vinci oh. in it, you know, and it's like, oh, I can't wait to go see it. And it's not necessarily that I think that Da Vinci was all that in a bag of chips. I do think he was in many ways. It's not my favorite were, um, era of art, you know, I'm not a renaissance person. I just think it's a cool story, you know, and it puts my foot in the art pool. And you think it's cool that the Rembrandt is supposedly in my bathroom. This is what I'm trying to say to you. I don't know who you bought it from. (laughs) (laughs) You, if you were on, um, eBay, 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 we should be telling them to look there. I didn't even Uh think about it. (laughs) Okay. So can I make a connection here? Yes. Because I feel like maybe, maybe we're at a four. As a child, uh huh, I remember my mom taking me to a art exhibit for the relics of Pompeii. Oh wow, very cool! It, I was in Dallas, mm-hmm. and I can just remember how interesting it was to me. Not you know who did this piece or what, but like 
the sculptures that were uncovered from this volcanic ash and the people, the, the artwork of the people that you know were in completely, they could have been running and completely covered by the volcano, you know, the lava. And there's, there they are, you know, like. And how did it make it, right? Like, yeah. it's just, it's mind boggling when you think about that. So for me, that type of stuff interests me more than if uh, you want me to go look at paintings in a gallery. Fair enough. I understand that. Okay. I don't want modern stuff either. I can't, I don't get it. Me either. It doesn't bring joy to me. It doesn't bring joy to me. I've and got I, a big eyeball and you know, I don't know. I think you brought up a very good point though. Cause I feel like we're at a four. We could be moving at a four. I feel good yeah. about it. Yeah, okay. Good. I feel that one of the things that you can do in order to help yourself feel more comfortable in the art world mm -hmm. is kind of settle into one of the movements, meaning if you really love the glittery Byzantine two-dimensional mosaic work, mm -hmm. and like that's something that's just aesthetically pleasing to your eye, mm -hmm. seek it out. It's in a lot of places. Now, let me say this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, oh, I like that. I can't tell you where it came from. I understand that. I, I just like, oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. I don't know. Fair enough. Yeah, I think you're right. But I will say there are so many. And there's the Renaissance. There's Rococo. That's all the, like the frilly stuff. Like when you think of Amadeus, mm, all that kind of Amadeus. stuff. It, this is what I'm saying. There's Baroque. There's Gothic. That's all the pointy stuff with mm, the beautiful Notre state. Dame. Notre Dame. Yes. Okay. There's Art Nouveau, which is that beautiful. It's kind of like... um um, our 1920s uh, okay, um, okay. kind of stuff, right? Uh -huh. But in Europe, in Europe, they also had that choice okay. too. There's art from other places. There's tribal art, there's Asian art, there's mm -hmm. Southeastern Asian art. There's things from the South Pacific that you could be looking at. There's Russian art that's got a very specific feel to it. My point is find the one that you kind of like that you kind of are drawn to. And I'll tell you mine. And the true art connoisseurs of the world are going to dismiss me when I say this. Go word. ahead, do it. Ready? Impressionism. I love it. Monet? Uh, yes, Monet. Whoa, and do you see what I just did? You did. You want to know why? Because you got me at. Because you're at a five. You're at a five. Okay, let's do 4.75. 4.75. I'll take it. Because see, you know the artist better than you think. I will tell you, I enjoy Impressionism. First of all, I like the palette. Mm -hmm. The palette is mostly blues and greens, and that's my mm -hmm. thing, right? I like that. I have the sunflowers you got me. So pretty. From Monet's Garden. From Giverny. There exactly. you go. Exactly. Which is another kind of connection that you can make, is enjoying the artists themselves. I mean, most artists are pretty interesting personalities as it stands knowing about an artist and maybe seeing where they came from or where they lived out their last can days. i throw a novel in here for you hit it breakfast with picasso amen it's a great novel i am at a 5.5 ladies and gentlemen she just threw out breakfast with picasso and i do believe that's the novel's title but i it read is. it I bought it at a bookstore, local bookstore that sells hues, new, all kinds that I always We'll give them a plug. It's called Chamberlain's Bookstore in yes, Jacksonville, Chamberlain's Florida. Chamberlain's Book Mine, two locations. <laughs> um, and I'm like, oh, okay, this, this looks interesting. So I did, and it talked about his artwork, and it was a girl who would go up and bring him breakfast when he was trying to hide away. And he painted his artwork. I think it's a great book. And I love those kind of stories that give you some sort of insight. Because I really think in the end, for the traveler, art is meant to be something that gives you insight into the things that you're interested in. It should be a tool that we're using to understand more rather than some obscure thing right. that's like over our heads. It's not. See, I got my art, but I also love the story within it. That's where I'm going yep. with this. I love it. Now let's talk about a very specific kind of art. Oh, what kind? Art that is not necessarily received very well in the United States. 
Whoa, what kind? Naked art. Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't like naked art. There's Especially a lot of naked in the art. Morning when I get out of the shower, no I naked art for me. I don't want to see naked no. art. Okay, but I will tell you, there's a lot of naked art. Now, can I remember overseas. the child seeing some naked art? Woo. We saw the big David sculpture. And, and it's I, big. <laughs> well, I was with my mother and I was a young child. And all I can remember saying, wow, what big? And my mother goes, hands. <laughs> I don't think that's what I was referring to. I but. don't think so either. Well, you know, I think that's a really great example of if you are going to try to encourage kids or grandkids to be in the art world, you have to be prepared to have those kinds of conversations. And what about Venus and Milo with no arms? With no arms, but boobies. Yeah, yeah. I, I do think it's amazing to see how they figured out anatomy. And, you know, probably the person who is most famous for it is Da Vinci, who would pay the local morticians, whatever they were called at that time, he would pay for the bodies of prisoners and beggars mm -hmm. and take them apart so he could figure out, he and Michelangelo both did that. But you know what I think is nice, though, is to see, though, that people do see beauty in the human body. Yeah. Whichever. If you're the nice little skinny mm -hmm. or you're the chubby little cherub. Exactly. Or you're the ro robust woman laying on the couch. Mm -hmm. She matters too. She Fat girls matter. That's too. what I'm saying. Freddie Mercury knew that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just it's nice to see and it shouldn't be like we are shamed at looking at this art yeah you know, oh, but it should be taken in as the part beauty of, of it and part of the process of how the artistic world has kind of moved forward from two-dimensional stick figures on a cave wall to understanding human anatomy which artisans were often art masters were often involved in medicine yeah for this exact reason and to see that kind of connection is fascinating you know if it wasn't for artists trying to strive to that maybe we wouldn't have made the progress that we made in medicine the mm, way we did amen. you know hello da vinci right yeah that brings me to another point i feel give me a number throw out a number for okay, me okay i'm gonna get we're at a five right now we're at a good, at solid, a good solid five, five. everybody a okay good, solid five so that brings me to my very next uh point which is Art in situ, Terry. Do you know what in situ means? Um, no, but go ahead and tell me. It means art where we, it was intended to be. Okay. Yeah. So think about um, the missing Rembrandt in my bathroom. Art where it was intended to be. <laughs> or perhaps maybe we think about um, like the mosaic of the academy or the painting of the academy in the vatican okay. it was meant to be on that wall okay. right yes or perhaps an altarpiece that was made for a specific church yes the fact that it's in the place that it was intended to be that it was made for mm -hmm. can make it maybe a little bit more fascinating and give you a little bit more insight as to why it was even created to begin with, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so let's take like um, Napoleon's tomb in Paris as okay. an example. His tomb, which is a piece of artwork and sculpture in okay. itself, right, I right, mean, right. he didn't joke around. Mm -hmm. It was made for the exact place that it sits. And it's not very, he's not very big. He's not very big. His tomb? Very big, mm. thus giving us birth to the term Napoleon complex. Yes. Yes. Um, so there are a lot of pieces of work that you can see where it's in situ and it can make a difference in what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. I will also say this. I think that the beginning art lover, like you're, you're an art liker and you're moving to mm -hmm. be an art lover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to also take advantage of the experts around you because sometimes they can tell you some of the most fascinating things about art, architecture, sculpture, or any other kind of art that you come across. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a perfect example. My mother and I were in Rome and we took the staircase that was carved by Bermini mm. up 
to the roof of this church. Right. So we're on the roof of the church and the woman that took us up there goes like this. She says, um, stick your head in the window and put your hand on the ceiling. So we're all the way up at the very, very mm -hmm. top of the church and we could touch the top of the church's ceiling, the sanctuary ceiling. Mm -hmm. And she goes, you are touching gold from the new world that Columbus brought to Queen Isabella. Shut up. That's cool. And it's part of the architecture, right. right? So it's those kind of moments that I think are the hook. Yeah. That that are the thing that bring you in there. And again, I promised you I wasn't going to talk about technique, uh -uh. brush strokes, or any of that. I think that you can enjoy art without all of those oh, yeah. things, right? I think it's the word art that's scary because as a child, my mother made me take art lessons. Oh my gosh, trauma. And I think, oh, I'm going to have to learn to paint. No. Well, the other thing that I would say to you is I would also try it yourself. And I hear that those were traumatic times for you. It was very traumatic. But imagine being given kind of like a paint by numbers, which we can do. Do you know I still own my paint box? I still have my paint box. Do you really? Yeah. So you're really an artist in the end. Oh, and there's I feel, a pain in it. There's a pain in it. I feel, podcast listeners, that I'm allowed to bump us up to a six. You can bump us up to a six. I would go do, like, painting with a twist and try my hand at painting. They have that in the gardens at Giverny. Okay, but we can't go there right now if everyone doesn't know. We're not really traveling crazy right now, but we want to be. We can plan it. We can plan it. Okay. I'm in for that. Okay, so, Terry. Yes, Alex? We've done a lot. We've talked about a ton when it comes to art. Yes. Are you still having an art attack, or do you feel oh, better? I do feel better. I took my meds. Oh. I do. I do feel better about it, looking at it from not just, you're going to tell me about techniques and stroke, and you're going to make me identify you know, what this this artist was wearing on the day that he painted this. Yes. And considering all the other aspects of art, not just being a portrait or a painting, but everything else. Something and, framed in a gallery. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I do think that it's a really great perspective to have and a great place to begin to enjoy. I'm game. And that's what I want for you is to enjoy. Do I get a six? I'll give you a seven. Yes. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have accomplished what we wanted to accomplish because Yaya, on a scale of one to ten, is, is sticking strong at a seven. Yes. Woohoo! All right, Terry, we have talked all about art today, and I hope you're feeling a little bit better. I'm actually going to throw you some now boarding picks that may make you feel even more confident about adding art into your travels. All right, see what you can do for me. All right, I do have a couple of books that I think definitely speak to being a traveler at the same time and, and at the same time loving art. Okay. Okay. So um, Europe 101, Europe's top 100 masterpieces are two books by Rick Steves where he really infuses the traveler into seeing art for the place that it holds in history. Okay. And I do think that art is something that can help us be more historically present and it can help us out. So they're, I'm not going to lie to you. Look, I'm, nobody can see me. She's looking in my eyes. I'm, I'm telling you, you. they're slow reads. Oh. Okay? okay. Hang in there with them and read like two pages. It'll take a year to read the book. It's great. Okay. okay. Don't read too much at one time because you will wind up getting overwhelmed. The other book that I totally recommend is a pop culture classic, which is The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. It brings in and wraps in so many pieces of artwork and you kind of don't even know it. And, you know, like we said before, when you have some sort of context to enjoy art, you're, you're going to make a better choice to go and see it and enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy different parts of the Louvre 
because maybe I saw it in that Dan Brown movie and I've made a connection, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, the book has that much more. What's the movie about the hidden, all the hidden stuff from World War II? I'm getting to it. I'm okay. getting to it. Okay, or can I watch any National Treasures movie and, and get some artwork? Yeah, I would say that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. For sure. Okay, here's my travel tip. My overall art as a traveler travel tip. Art doesn't have to be an overwhelming experiences. There are moments to connect with art that make it an amazing part of anyone's travels. Don't overdo it, but don't ignore it. Gotcha. Keep it in your purview because you'd be surprised what you learn from the art world that really makes your trip far more significant. Okay. Now I will say there is this super cute travel product that speaks right into this. Okay. We're always looking for a way to create context. I found this game that works a lot like Clue, but instead of having to go and find all of the different pieces, you have to go and find different artwork. It's called the Grand Museum of Art Board Game, and it's available on Amazon, and we will link it in our notes below. It's adorable. It's a great way to get kids involved. But to tell you the truth, I like the cards. I, I honestly think I may take the cards. Like if I know I'm going to a specific museum, I may take the cards out and mm -hmm. just get myself aware of the big pieces that are in a specific museum that I'm going to. So maybe a travel tool as well as a travel product. That's fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay back to your movie. Back to my movie. Okay, the movie that you were thinking of is called Monuments Man. That's it. And that has a great cast, Matt Damon, George Clooney. That's it. Yep, John Goodman. And it's all about the major Nazi art heist and how the Americans and Russians raced to get a hold of all of those things to either reclaim them as um, – uh, spoils of war or to kind of get them back to their rightful owners. And it is, it's a feel good movie. Like, especially if you're not into like the saving private Ryan kind of movies, this is kind of like the pleasant yes. one of those. It's still a challenge. It's still war. It's still all of those things, but there's a lot of humor in it and uh, it's really great. And I will tell you when you see like a piece of artwork that they've found Mm -hmm. And you've seen it in a museum and you're like, oh my gosh, wait, I saw that thing. Yeah. You know, like I had no idea that that was one of those pieces that was stolen. So it is very neat to see that. Okay. For me. Okay. You know, go I'm, for it. I'm a, I'm a Netflix junkie. I love it. And there's things that catch my eye. And I know that we were getting ready and getting prepped for us to talk about art. So nervous. <laughs> So I watched, it's called Made You Look. Uh-huh. And it's it, it's kind of like, it's a documentary and it's true crime. So, you know, I like it. So these people are like basically imitating art, taking it in and selling it for buku's a box and it's worth diddly do. Unbelievable. And it was all modern art, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think this happened out of New York City. So here you have Monuments yeah, Man. Yeah, New York Gallery. Uh, hello. Figure yeah. Out. yeah. You have Monuments Man, which is this incredible true crime it's story. Historical. Yeah. And so is this one with modern art. If I'm not mistaken, wasn't Jackson Pollock part of that? I think maybe. Possibly. I think maybe. Um, okay. Let's talk about going to see that art. I actually have a travel food tip. Um, there are many, many hidden cafes inside museums. Get the DL from the people at the front desk as to where the good quiet ones are, because sometimes there's like um, some sort of chain something toward the front that is overrun. But if you just ask around, you'd be surprised. And I've seen this happen in Europe. I've seen it happen in Japan and I've seen it happen in the United States. If you go to the Smithsonian museums in the United States, mm -hmm. there's a McDonald's in the air and space museum. It is overrun. It, it, it is so many people mm -hmm. and it's so Overpriced. sad. Yes. It's horrible. Literally 
across the mall, which is a two minute walk mm -hmm. from the back door of the Air and Space Museum to the National Portrait Gallery. If you go inside the sculpture garden, there is the loveliest cafe with French music playing. Mm. And you can sit outside, you could sit inside. They have a beautiful menu. There's tablecloths on the outside tables, like to enjoy the sculpture garden that you're in. It is fantastic. And I think people kind of think, oh, I have to go for whatever I see first. I seriously recommend asking. I know that there are two museums in Paris that if you ask, they will tell you about places that barely have anybody and it's all homemade food and pastry and mm, amazing. Delicious. So definitely ask around. Okay, so here's mine. Mm -hmm. Because I, I need to become more artistically aware. Fair enough. So there's an app. It's called Daily Art App. Mm-hmm from Poland, I love but it's them. in English. So every day, what do you do? You open it up and they give you a piece of artwork. They give you a little background summary, not a lot, not to just overwhelm you. And then you like it, you don't like it, you're on with your day. You got a little daily dose of some art. Just enough to say I did it without taking more than a minute or two of your time. Yeah, I love that's for that me. idea. So great. The travel industry has taken quite a blow from several global issues, including the war in Ukraine, the COVID-19 crisis, and inflation that makes it hard for people to get out into the world like they want to. At this point, leading experts are predicting that it is going to take up to three years for the travel industry to bounce back to full force. One way that you can help it is to like and subscribe to 10 microbloggers. Start with us. You can like and subscribe to our podcast and our website so that you can tell the travel industry that people are still interested in travel. So Terry, how can listeners get a hold of us? We'd like to hear from you. Contact us at bobshianyaya at gmail.com with your questions, suggestions, favorite travel tips, products, and travel trends so that we can share your ideas in the future. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Here you go, guys. Bobshi and Yaya. B-A-B-C-I-A and Y-I-A-Y-I-A. BobShianYaya.com is the home base for everything that we love about travel. And it's where we show, where we store our show notes, as well as many of the resources that we offer to our travel community, including travel literacy for the kiddos. We always have new posts about all the things we love and about all the travel we're up to, including today's topic, as well as features on destinations, travel lifestyle, and stories to make you smile. Don't, didn't get all that? Just check out our show notes for all of the ways to stay in touch and links to anything we chatted about in this episode. As always, thanks for joining us for our journey.